housing prices can be an emotionally charged issue. As a result, we're often bombarded by extreme, overconfident opinions on this topic. One school of thought is, you can't go wrong with bricks and mortar. In the long run, house prices always go up, so every moment you wait to jump on the ladder is costing you money. And rent money is dead money, so if you're renting, you're clearly a sucker. On the other hand, we have claims that if you do buy housing, you're a sucker because housing is a giant Ponzi scheme. People love to throw out predictions of huge falls. Housing prices could fall 30, 40, even 50%. So let's find out what's actually going on. Let's take a look at the data. We'll set the year 2000 equal to 100 and examine the growth since then. In nominal terms, which is just raw dollars without accounting for inflation, prices have gone up almost 3.5 times. It's easy to see why some Australians have had such a burning fervour for residential property. For the rest of this video, we'll look at prices in real terms, which is adjusting for inflation. Even when we adjust for inflation, prices have more than doubled, reaching a peak in quarter three of 2017. Since then, there has been a pullback, and the question on everyone's mind is what happens next? Could it be a minor correction that represents a great buying opportunity with prices soon resuming to march emphatically upward? Or could there be a major crash with prices taking a very long time to recover? Or the less dramatic and less talked about possibility is just a period of long stagnation. I can't tell you precisely what the future will look like. And I suggest you treat with great skepticism anyone who tells you that they can. What I will demonstrate is that the rapid price growth we have seen in recent years is a historical anomaly and that the Australian obsession with real estate has become a dangerous fetish. My aim is to convince you that whatever happens, the sort of growth that we have experienced in recent years is very unlikely to be repeated. So let's take a look at a few other countries. All of these major markets have also experienced growth, although Canada and the USA have been more hard hit by the global financial crisis. The US in particular still hasn't recovered from its pre-GFC peak. So at least globally, we have reason to question the notion that house prices always go up. Now let's add Japan to the mix. Here we see a developed country where prices have remained sluggish for almost two decades. Prices in real terms in Japan today are still just 84% of what they were back in the year 2000. But housing pundits will tell you that Australia is different. Australia is special. So let's zoom out and take a look at Australia's long-term history. Fortunately, we have good data going back to 1890. So this time we'll use 1890 as the index and set it equal to 100. These prices are quality adjusted. So they take into account that houses have got bigger and nicer over the years. So Australia has had a period of stagnation even longer than Japan that has actually lasted over half a century. Prices didn't convincingly break away from their 1890 base until 1963. The breakaway growth since the 1960s explains the popular perception that property prices always go up. This is because it's the only experience in living memory. If you bought your first house in 1960 at the age of 25, it means that you're now 83 years old. This means that almost everyone who experienced the old trend of relatively flat housing prices is now dead. So how did the recent breakaway happen? There are many legitimate explanations for the growth experience since the 1960s, such as increased population growth and economic growth, and women increasingly entering the workforce and elevating household incomes. The introduction of negative gearing in 1985 has also incentivized people to invest in property. Then in the late 90s, we see prices start to rise even more rapidly. At this point, prices are beginning to rise faster than incomes and the rate of growth in the economy at large. Here we see that since 1995, real wages have only gone up 30%, but housing prices have almost tripled. This cannot continue indefinitely. Already Australian house price to income ratios are among the highest in the world. In Sydney, house prices as of 2018 are almost 13 times average annual incomes and second only to Hong Kong. 
If prices continue to rise approximately twice as fast as incomes, the future starts to look increasingly absurd. Let's look at the recent trend, where nationwide house price to income ratios have almost doubled in just over 20 years. In another 20 years, could prices in Sydney realistically be 26 times average incomes? In a few more decades, could this have reached 52 times, and so on? We soon get to a point where it becomes impossible for even a wealthy couple to pay off a modest home within a human lifespan. For many people on average or below average incomes in Sydney, this point has already been reached. The only reason we have been able to reach such extreme prices relative to incomes in the first place is because price rises have been fueled by growing household debt and record low interest rates. Australia's increase in household debt correlates closely with increased expenditure on housing. Historically, when we see the price of an asset driven up exponentially by people taking on greater and greater debt because they expect continued future price rises, this should raise alarm bells. For example, the dot-com bubble of the late 90s. Driven by greed, prices were bid up and up, not because investors understood these tech companies and believed in them, but because they expected the momentum of rapid price growth to continue, enabling them to make an easy profit. Although the Nasdaq did eventually recover, this took almost 15 years, and many investors lost their shirts in the meantime. More recently, the hype around Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies has resulted in one of the most spectacular and rapid asset bubble crashes in history. So does all of this mean that you shouldn't buy a house? Not necessarily. There are many good reasons to buy a house. Ownership offers security of tenure and the ability to customize and make a place your own. Options that are simply not available when renting. The notion that I want to dispel is that you have to buy a house. The most dangerous version of this housing obsession suggests that you should borrow as much money as possible and spend as much as possible on a house because the more you spend and the faster you get on the ladder, the faster you start seeing huge growth. Because of this misguided advice, many Australians are now vulnerable to even the slightest increase in interest rates and could lose their homes and their financial security. If you do decide to buy a house, Buy it because it will give you the lifestyle that you want. Don't expect it to make you rich. Make sure you can afford the repayments, even if interest rates go up, and even if you were to face some economic shocks, like losing your job. If you decide not to buy, that's fine too. Renting and investing in other assets like stocks can be great for some people. Whatever you decide, ignore the pundits and the short-term hype, and look at the data and the long-term trends. Thanks for watching, and to learn more about how to tell stories with data like this one, go to dataseer.com.